Good morning. morning. Welcome to Shepherd of the Hills. Uh, I am not Pastor Halderson. I I could not fit in his shoes, even if I wanted to. Um, Your pastor uh, had asked me to to fill in for him. He uh, is getting some time away to uh, go in and uh, celebrate, I guess, one of his uh, really good friends, I don't know if it's son or daughter, um, wedding. So they're on the other side of Iowa, and hopefully they made it, because if you know Pastor Halderson like I do, his family and my family, we share problems (laughs) on the road every time. And you'll hear a little bit about that today. Um, but uh, again, uh, visitors, uh, welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, our, our message today is really about hope. And we ought to remember that a Christian's hope is different than any others. A Christian's hope is eternal. A Christian's hope is forever, always a non-believer's hope does end, does go away quickly. But a Christian's, you can count on it forever. That hope is in Christ. I pray that you hear the words today and you go throughout the week knowing that your hope will never leave you. We begin our services with him. 455, Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus lives.
please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with the true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity, but I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. O oh God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, 14, and then 32 through 41. We read, Then Peter stood up with the eleven. He raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, He has received from the Father 
the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to that number that day. Here ends our reading. The psalm of the day is Psalm 116. Our second lesson is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1, 17 through 21. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, 
a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Verse of the day, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Alleluia. So now we have our children's message. Pastor said that they may not come up because I'm so ugly. No, that's not, that's not what he said. Sorry, that's not what he said. Hello. So I'm going to sit here, and you guys have to promise that you help me up because I had some surgery on my neck, and I just don't know if I'm going to get up. But... I'm going to try. All right. I'm Dave. What makes you happy? What makes you happy? Can you think of anything? Treats? Treats make you happy? That's good. Yeah. How about, um, I have some pictures here that I'm going to show you. Tell me if this makes you happy. What's that? A birthday party? Does that make you happy? Yeah? Anytime you get to celebrate, huh? It's fun, right? Or pretty soon it's going to be really nice out, and that's a childhood memory of mine, is getting to run around outside with your friends, right? Your friends make you happy, right? Good. Well, I have some other questions. What makes you sad? What do you think? Maybe when your snacks run out, right? Or what do you think's going on here in this picture? What do you think? Does she look like she's feeling okay? Probably looks like she's sick, huh? So maybe when you're sick, when you're not feeling well, right? Um, how about this one? What's going on there? It's a toy, but what's going on there? Do you think that's a normal toy? Do you see Superman's arm? It's broken. I know when my toys break, I'm, I'm sad about it, right? Yeah? Oh, that's what I'm afraid I'm going to do. <laughs> How about this? What do you think's going on there? Do you see big brother doing something to little sister? Pulling her hair? That probably makes you sad. It definitely makes little sister sad. It makes mom and dad sad because we're not behaving, right? Well, that's what happens in this world, isn't it? We're sinners, and sin makes us sad, right? Sin takes away our hope. So in our, in our gospel lesson today, we talk about two disciples that are walking down the street, and they're not having a good day. They're not going to a birthday party. They're not going to play with friends, but they're going back to home, and they're defeated. They feel sad because their teacher, their master, Jesus, went to the cross. Do you know why Jesus went to the cross for you? 
How come? Because we're sinners. And Jesus needed to pay for our sins so that we can have hope, so that we can have eternal life. So, here's another picture. What's going on there? It's Jesus, right? After he died, right? After he died, he rose from the dead to say that you have hope, that you have forgiveness of sins. So you can do exactly what you guys always do. And I don't even really know you. But I know that you bring smiles to your parents. And you bring smiles to your friends because you're a Christian who knows that you have nothing to worry about. You have Jesus. All right. So let's pray. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a couple words and then I want you to say them with me, okay, in our prayer. All right, so we'll bow our heads. Jesus, thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for reminding us that we have your word and your promises. Amen. All right, I'm going to try to get up now. I did it. Good, good. Thanks, guys. So now you can go to, to your um, children's church. Is that right? And we will continue with the hymn of the day, He is risen, He is risen. And that's uh, hymn 445. <laughs>
please stand for the gospel? Our gospel is recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. He was powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers, they handed him down over to be sentenced to death. They crucified him. But we, we had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and they told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions, they went to the tomb and they found it just as the woman had said. They did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going forward. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. Well, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he began to give it to them. And then their eyes, they were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us? While he talked with us on the road, and he opened the scriptures to us. They got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, and saying, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you, fellow earthly angels, from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Been here twice. Again, my name is Dave. I am uh, Jim Stute's son. Um, I think I've preached here twice. This will be the third time. And I have to tell you that every time that I am asked by Jeff to come here 
and, and uh, preach for you. I get more excited, I think, than you do, I'm sure, because you are angels. Your voices are heavenly. Your, your voices are amazing. And if, if you can sing and hear and sound the way you do, I can't even imagine what you sound like out there. So good for you. Keep being earthly angels. So, as I told you earlier before we started, that Pastor Halderson and, and I, my family and his, we have a, a, a kind of, I think, a habit or maybe even like a contest. Um, who can break down the fastest and farthest? <laughs> um, it just so happens that it happens all the time. I hope Pastor Halderson's family are there and they're having a great time. It reminded me, though, of a time when that didn't work so well for us, for the Stude family. You see, we were on our way home to our homeland, to the U.S., to, to Colorado. Um, I served a church up in Canada about six hours north of Pastor Halderson's church in Calgary. We were so excited to finally get back home, to go ahead and celebrate with family, to have a good day. And then it happened. A nightmare. You see, we just crossed the border of Canada. And, and actually, I should back up, because we were at the border. We were right there at the border, crossing the border, driving through, when I looked down and I saw my temperature gauge go all the way to the right. And that's not good. Got to my homeland, saw that and said, oh, they'll help me. There was no, yay, the Stutes are home. He actually said, keep driving, please. I'm like, no, you don't seem to understand. My car is about to fry. And he says, you got to keep going. All right. So put it in, in drive, and we kept on going. 7 o'clock, 30 minutes outside the border, dark, our car broke down. The five of us, plus a great Pyrenees, towing a pop-up camper that had seen its day, three young boys, not so good. Let's just say all our hope our hope of having a wonderful time of vacation with our family. Matter of fact, I was on my way to uh, meet my dad so we could go to Yellowstone to camp for a week and then a week down here in Colorado. All that hope was gone. It disappeared. But then, some strangers pulled up. A husband and a wife. They came to rescue the Stutes to bring our downcast faces back to smiles. And I remember this, our older two boys, Shannon and Trace, as I had finally caved in and said, okay, take my family. Even though I've seen this movie, and no, usually it doesn't end well, they said, we're going to take the family you stick here and wait for the tow truck driver. And I saw Trace and Shannon grab Sharon's hands, Sharon here, and uh, I saw him console her. It'll be all right. It'll be okay. So two earthly angels pull up and they save the day. It seemed impossible, really, to see the good in these two people that we didn't know because I didn't trust them. I didn't trust them until they gave me their satellite phone. I said, if they're giving me a satellite phone, which is a couple grand at that time, then they must be honest. Everything will be fine. Stupid me. A satellite phone? How about the cross? How about Jesus? Everything will be fine. It seemed impossible. Later on, a week later, because we stayed with them for a week. 
because we couldn't get any parts. They put us up in their, their really nice cottage for visitors. It was on a Blue Ribbon River in Montana, and they took me around trying to find parts. We became friends. We had dinner every night. Everything changed. We went from being completely lost with fear to being filled with joy and hope yet again. Our gospel reading today, which our sermon is based on, two disciples on the weekend, the weekend of Jesus' death and resurrection, I kind of think they thought the same thing. No, they weren't coming from Canada. They weren't really visiting family. They were traveling from Jerusalem, most likely to celebrate the Passover. They stayed there in Jerusalem because it was the Sabbath and it was unlawful for them to come home sooner than that. They were heading to the town of Emmaus, which was northwest of Jerusalem, about seven miles. The Gospel writer Luke tells us that one of the disciples named Cleopas But he doesn't tell us about the other. Tradition has it that it may have even been Luke or possibly Cleopas' wife. It's quite possible that the one of the Marys that was present at Jesus' feet while on the cross might have been this Cleopas' mother. So now we've painted the picture. His disciples were downcast. They had just saw probably the worst possible scenario that could ever happen. Their whole world was turned upside down. Their cherished teacher, their leader, was brutally beaten, spit on, killed. Does that puzzle you? Because at first it did me. Are you kidding me? You walked and talked with him for three years. You saw him. You saw him raise people from the dead. You saw him provide food for thousands. How could you be downcast? How could you be walking down that road with your chin touching your chest? Why? Well, it's easy. We've seen the movie, haven't we? We know the end. We know the hope, the hope in the Lord. You could argue, yes, they did too, and they did. Why were they so worried? Why, you might ask, would these disciples not remember that Jesus warned them over three times in the last week, what would happen? Once even being the other day on Monday, Thursday, that Jesus would rise from the dead. And in three days, he will build up this temple. They would have also known the scripture had told them all of this. Being good Jews, right? They knew Yet we see them answer Jesus in this way, and this is what is peculiar. They replied, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet. He was mighty in deed and word. Before who? Before God. And all of the people. The chief priest and our rulers, they handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. And this is where it is. But we were hoping. Doesn't sound so confident, huh? We were hoping. Hoping that he was going to redeem Israel. And not only that, but beside all of this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Also, some of the women in our group, they amazed us. 
They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb. They found it just as the women had said. But they did not see him. So puzzled and saddened. They were focused on the wrong Jesus. You see, they were focused on the Jesus that they wanted. A Jesus who was an earthly Jesus, who would take care of the earthly problems that they had. They were focused on a man who would free them from the earthly chains of the Romans. A guy who seemed to be defeated by those same earthly rulers. However, a heavenly Jesus was right before them for the last three years, pointing this out, pointing them to the Word of God in the words of Isaiah, in the words of David, Solomon, all the other Psalms, Zechariah, God will strike the shepherd and his sheep will scatter. They knew this passage, the suffering servant of Isaiah. The promise of Job. Just think about that. Promise of Job that he will see his Redeemer with his own eyes. That's what Job said. These were passages of hope that the Israelites lived by but not the hope that the disciples were talking about. A Christian's hope is based on a guarantee, like it was already fulfilled. And that's the key, already done. This is the hope that we are after. I know that my Redeemer lives. You know, Job said this some 1,500 years before the birth of Christ. Yet he was confident in it. And again, I ask the question, why were they so somber? And the ironic thing is here is they also told Jesus, the person that they didn't recognize, they told Jesus what they had already heard from the women. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. The temple, or the, the, excuse me, the tomb was empty. Done. So I asked, does it sound familiar to you? Because I have to say that it sounds familiar to me. And I saw the movie too. But Satan beats you up. Sin confuses you. I remember a time back at MLC. I had just gotten out of uh, one of our Bible classes. You know, they always strengthen you and, and, and make you feel good, right? Um, I mean, the professors that you get to sit behind and in front of and listen to, how could you not walk away with, oh yes, this is great. And I found myself in the old chapel by myself because I had a, a, a period off um, before the chapel service. And I found myself going, hmm, I don't belong here. And this is a waste of time. And was Jesus really truthful? Did he really raise from the dead? <laughs> I saw the movie. I just heard the movie half an hour ago. Yet I'm sitting there in a pew, and Satan has got a hold of me, and he's beating me up, and he's telling me, this couldn't be real. This can't be true. Just give up and quit. But then, thankfully, 
you get the chapel service. And you get to be built back up. And you get to be reminded that you know the answers. The answers that you've been given since you were this little. And here, and here, and here. And every day that we're here in church, getting built up, reminding ourselves that, yes, yes, Jesus is risen. As we wait out our frightening uh, diagnoses, do we say, I was hoping for a better news? Or do we remember the risen Savior and say that my hope is in the Lord? And no matter what, no matter what happens, I have forgiveness. I have heaven. Heaven is my home. I don't need to worry about anything. A continued hope that can't be ruined by Satan because we know it to be true. But then I have to ask myself, and I'm sure you can sit there and ask yourself, for me, why then did my seven-year-old son, on the day that we broke down, why did he, he was little enough that he didn't even need to sit on that passenger chair of the car, but he kind of kind of went down on the, on, the, on the floorboard of the car and look at me and say, it's okay, Dad. It's okay. Jesus has our back. We'll be fine. Why does a seven-year-old have to tell a trained minister at the time not to worry? And we'll just pray to Jesus. It'll be okay. Because we focus on what is seen instead of what is known. What is known is Jesus is our conqueror. It is finished. You see, our son Jesse, he was focusing on what he knew to be true. Jesus reigns. A seven-year-old ignores the situation around him. It had to be awful for them. I mean, they didn't know, yet they went right to their Savior and said, we need help. Right? He remembered what he was taught. We know. We have been taught God's Word and God's promises. We know that they are complete that it is finished. What does Jesus do for the disciples on the road? This is the key part here. He said to them, how foolish you are and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and to enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. You see, Jesus gave them the reminder that they needed. He doesn't stop and he walk away and say, again? <laughs> Come on. Why can't you believe? He doesn't do that. He says, let's go over it again. From Moses through all the prophets. He reminds them that there is a flaw in this world and it is sin. But then he takes them through the best Bible class ever. Just imagine that walking with him. He reminds them that Jesus completed the plan. So we don't have to worry about anything on this side of heaven. Jesus continues to tell us throughout the Bible. Don't worry. He reminds us that even the sparrows are taken care of in Matthew. Even though that they were sold for a penny. Why then would our Heavenly Father, our Creator, not protect and provide for us? So we all have been afraid confused, 
And I'm sure I'm telling the truth that we all have forgotten that we have a God that loves us and will never forsake us. Our sinful nature and the devil, he's good at clouding us, clouding our minds of the always good and perfect nature of God. Brothers and sisters, really what it comes down to is this. We live in a sin-filled world, a world that was formed perfectly. But we know this. We know what God's Word says. The reason why I'm repeating it is because we need to hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. Remember the Garden of Eden. Remember that everything went bad because now we can find ourselves out of there looking at the cross. We realize that everything has changed the way we think has changed. Much of the time, we only see the broken side of this world, don't we? Broken it is. Unfortunately, we do not focus, though, on the fixed or redeemed side of this world. We lose sight of the fact that Jesus fixed this problem of death and sin. He fixed it on the cross when he utterly confident, he uttered confidently, It is finished, paid in full, done. Don't worry about it any longer. So the disciples, and we for that matter, we know the glorious answer that we need to give in our times of confusion and loss. He lives and he continues to live for us. So the disciples told the stranger on the road that he had himself, Jesus, was a great prophet. Did you hear those words? He said that, right? The disciple that was speaking said he was a great prophet. In word and deed before God and all people, if he can raise the dead to life, then he can also help us through our daily struggles. The disciples and the women that morning, they had already seen Jesus and the empty tomb. The disciples on the road had already received this message. And you also have seen the empty tomb. You yourself have seen it. No, you weren't at the tomb, but God has brought the empty tomb to you, to your eyes, to your eyes in his word. His true and living word reminds us that because he rose, you too will be raised from the dead. There is no better words than that. Your sins of doubt have been forgiven. Dear Christians, I pray that your hearts are burning within you just as the Emmaus disciples' hearts were. That's really the most important part of this. Their hearts were burning inside them. Be like the disciples on the road. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us? And while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And when he broke the bread... It's you. That ought to happen for us every day, every day of our lives, especially when we're going to God's Word. We ought to think, I know you. You are the Son of God. You have forgiven me. Jump at that chance to invite Jesus to stay with you by hearing his promises in Bible study and devotions. Be reminded of Jesus in worship as you are doing. You are earthly angels. You prove it every Sunday here by singing an amazing tune. I mean, your hearts your hearts are just jumping out. I can hear it. It's so awesome to hear. It's so awesome to see. Go out there today and every day. Maybe not sing, not everybody are, you know, good Lutherans that love to hear song, but use your mouths, right? Um, speak these words to people. Remind them that they are forgiven children of God. Tell them that you've seen the movie, that you've seen what happened, that the tomb is brought to them and it's empty. 
Finally, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We now will continue our service with the offering. So there's a musical offering, I guess. Um, I would just say again, uh, you know, the, the offering plates are back there. But if you're a guest or a visitor, um, don't feel the, the obligation that you have to do that. Um, but how wonderful it is that we can not only use our voices, but we can also say, I want this to continue. I want to, to be able to help um, these things go along. So the offering is an amazing thing. Before you rise, we, are, we get a chance now to, to confess our Christian faith, our hope in the Lord through the Apostles' Creed. How many of you know the Apostles' Creed here? Everybody can raise that hand. How many of you had been in a situation where somebody asked you, why do you live the way you live? Why can you have a smile on your face? Why can you look up like this when things bad happen to you? I mean, I, I would hope everybody says yes to that too. How many of you said, oh, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say? Recite the Apostles' Creed to them. Because this is the hope that we believe. So when we get to recite the Apostles' Creed, look at it on that paper. Let those words jump out. Be excited about it. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us hope, giving us comfort, giving us a, a way out, reminding us that you are our Lord and Savior and that we don't have to worry about a thing. Lord, we ask that God of all grace, that we thank you for the gift of eternal life in your Son, by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, and by the faithful testimony of the apostles that you have assured us that our faith stands on a sure and solid foundation. Though we do not see Jesus with our physical eyes, help us to see him with the eyes of faith. Through your Holy Spirit, breathe on your church that it may be faithfully proclaim the gospel of the one risen Savior with courage and diligence in all lands and to all people. Grant that we also may be illuminated by the heavenly light of your word. And so keep us in the one and only true faith. 
Preserve us from all the assaults on our souls. Deliver us from doubt and despair, and preserve us from worldly wisdom and false teaching. Forgive the sins of your people. Strengthen the doubting and faithless, and bring back the forgetful and wayward, and comfort the anxious and be distressed. Lord, we also ask that you be with Pastor Halderson and his wife and his family, and give them the the uh, peace and the hope that they need uh, to continue to, to serve this congregation. Uh, give them the, the peace of, of vacation, um, but then also bring them back safely. Amen. We pray the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord our God, Our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and your truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. Bestow on us your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We'll conclude our service by singing All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, uh, hymn 512. You can be seated. (laughs) 